Today's episode is about a photo transistor optocoupler which is also known as an opto isolator is one of the most commonly used electronics component. In this episode you will learn how to use an optocoupler to control an LED and how to control the speed of a DC motor. How to select a particular transistor that can be used with the optocoupler. In this tutorial we will be covering a number 1 how does a photo transistor work and its types. Number 2 data sheet reading. Number 3 circuit diagrams. Number 4 interfacing with Arduino. Number 5 programming. And finally number 6 testing. Let's get started. We know about transformers that they can not only provide a step down or step up voltage but they also provide electrical isolation between the higher voltage on the primary side and the lower voltage on the secondary side. In other words, transformers isolate the primary input voltage from the secondary output voltage using electromagnetic coupling and this is achieved using the magnetic flux circulating within their laminated iron core. But we can also provide electrical isolation between an input source and an output load using just light by using a very common and valuable electronic component called an optocoupler. The basic design of an optocoupler also known as an opto isolator consists of an LED that produces infrared light and a semiconductor photosensitive device that is used to detect the emitted infrared beam. Both the LED and photosensitive devices are enclosed in a tight light body or package with metal legs for the electrical connections. Assume a photo transistor device is shown. Current from the source signal passes through the input LED which emits an infrared light whose intensity is proportional to the electrical signal. This emitted light falls upon the base of the photo transistor causing it to switch on and conduct in a similar way to a normal bipolar transistor. The photo transistor and photo darlington devices are mainly used in DC circuits while the photo SCR and photo trig allow AC powered circuits to be controlled. This is EL817 photo transistor photocoupler or optocoupler or you can also call this opto isolator. Let's have a look at its data sheet. The EL817 series of devices each consist of an infrared emitting diodes optically coupled to a photo transistor detector. This is the schematic symbol. Pin number 1 is the anode, pin number 2 is the cathode, pin number 3 is the emitter and pin number 4 is the collector. Its maximum collector current IC is 50 milliamps, and collector to emitter voltage can be up to 35 volts. The forward voltage which is the voltage needed to turn on the infrared LED the typical voltage is 1.2 volts and the maximum voltage is 1.4 volts and its forward current is 20 milliamps. As we are going to control this optocoupler using Arduino you know and you know that the voltage available on any pin is 5 volt when turned on. This 5 volt can damage the infrared LED so for this we need to use a current limiting resistor in series with this LED. Let's find out the value of this resistor. From the data sheet the typical voltage is 1.2 volts and the forward current is 20 milliamps. Using the Ohm's law V is equal to IR. R is equal to V by I. R is equal to 5 minus 1.2 divided by 20 milliamps. So we get a value of R is equal to 190 ohms. The nearest value is 220 ohms while at this time I have 330 ohm resistor so I am going to use this resistor. Let's first use this optocoupler to control an LED. Once we understand the whole process then after that we will be controlling a DC motor. This is the circuit diagram designed in Catsoft Eagle. If you want to learn how to make schematics and PCBs in Catsoft Eagle then watch my tutorials. On the left side a 330 ohm resistor is connected with pin number 1 of the optocoupler and the other end of the resistor is connected with pin 4 of the Arduino Omega. Pin number 2 of the optocoupler is connected with Arduino's uh, ground. This is a DC power jig. 
we will be using a separate 5 volt uh, DC power supply as you can see a 330 ohm resistor is connected with the LED and the LED cathode side is connected with pin number 4 of the optocoupler and pin number 3 is connected with the ground as you can see clearly the left side has no physical connection with the right side and provides a perfect isolation the only medium of communication is the light now let's implement the circuit on the breadboard First insert optocoupler into the breadboard. Now connect a 330 ohm resistor with pin number 1 of the optocoupler. Now connect pin 4 of the Arduino with resistor. And connect pin 2 of the optocoupler with the ground of Arduino. Now insert an LED into the breadboard in such a way that the cathode side of the LED is connected with pin 4 of the optocoupler and connect a 330 ohm resistor on the inner side of the LED. The forward voltage of this LED is 2.5 volts and current is 20 milliamps. Using the ohms law we can find out the resistance. So R is equal to 5 volt minus 2.5 volt divided by 20 milliamps. So R is equal to 125 ohms. Right now I have a 330 ohm resistor which works fine. Now connect a 5 volt wire with the resistor. And the ground wire with the pin number 3 of the optocoupler. So now you can see the LED side has no physical connection with the controller side. We are using a separate supply for the LED. That's why we say that the optocoupler provides isolation. So if any short circuit happens on this side, it will have no effect on the controller side. Now let's write a small program to control this LED. Integer opto underscore pin 1 is equal to 4. This line means that the optocoupler pin number 1 is connected with pin number 4 of the Arduino. The variable names follow some rules. Like for example, no numbers are allowed in the beginning of the variable names and no spaces are allowed. That's why instead of a space I have used an underscore. A variable name should be unique in simple words as your name is unique among your brothers and sisters. Every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions which are the white setup and while loop function. The white setup function executes only one time. White means that this function is not returning any value and the empty parentheses means that this function is not taking any arguments as the input. Pin mode opto underscore pin 1 output. Pin mode is a function and it takes two arguments as the input, the pin number or pin name. In our case, it is opto underscore pin 1 and the status that can be input or output as we are controlling an LED. So over here the optocoupler is used as output device. Digital write opto underscore pin 1 low we keep it off. Then starts a while loop function this function runs infinite times. To turn on and off any pin of the Arduino Omega we use a digital write function. This function also takes two arguments the pin number or pin name and the signal which can be high or low. Digital write opto underscore pin 1 comma high. This instruction is used to turn on the LED. Then there is a delay of 1000 milliseconds which is equal to 1 second. Digital write opto underscore pin 1 low. Turn off the LED and again a delay of 1 second. So the purpose of this program is to blink an LED. As you can see the LED can turn on and turn off and it's working perfectly. Now let's take this project to a little bit complex level. Now this time we will be using this autocoupler to control the speed of a computer fan. As you can see it needs 12 volt and 1.6 amps. To control the speed of this fan we need a MOSFET or a transistor which can handle 1.6 amps. Well, I have TIP122 transistor lying around. Let's have a look at its datasheet. 
As you can see, this can handle up to 5 amps, but we'll need a pretty cool heatsink. As we need 1.6 amps, uh, while this transistor can handle up to 5 amps, so this transistor is gonna work just fine. This transistor can handle maximum 100 volt DC and the emitter base voltage is 5 volt DC. It means this transistor can be controlled using any microcontroller. Now we are sure that this transistor can be used to control this fan. Now it's time to have a look at its pinouts. Pin number 1 is the base, pin number 2 is the collector and pin number 3 is the emitter. Before you actually make practical connections, it's a good designing practice to first make a simulation. Check your components of wiring or write a program. Once you are satisfied with the simulation, then practically check your connections on a breadboard. As you can see on the left side, a variable resistor is connected with analog pin A1 of the Arduino Omega. This variable resistor will be used to control the speed of computer fan. On the right side, pin number 5, which is the PWM pin, is connected with the 330 ohm resistor, which is connected with pin 1 of the optocoupler. Pin number 2 of the optocoupler is connected with the Arduino's ground. Never connect this ground with the grounds on the other side. As you can see on the right side, we have two different supplies, 5 volt and 12 volt. The 5 volt uh, will be used to give a 5 volt signal on the base of TIP122 transistor with the help of the optocoupler. When the optocoupler on and off, this 5 volt is connected with the base of the TIP122. The 12 volt supply is used to power up the motor. A diode is connected across the terminals of the motor. This is called a freewheeling diode. So one side of the motor is connected with 12 volts and the other side of the motor is connected with the collector of the TIP122 transistor and the emitter is connected with the ground. Make sure that you connect the grounds of both the supplies. Now let's practically check this on a breadboard. All the connections are as per the circuit diagram as I explained. Let me explain this once again. As you can see this is a variable resistor. It has three legs. I have soldered three jumper wires for the easy interfacing. The metal wire is connected with the analog pin A1 of the Arduino. The other two pins are connected with the 5 volts and ground. On the right side you can see I have two power supplies. This is a 5 volt supply and this is a 12 volt supply. The positive wire of the 12 volt supply is connected with the positive wire of the DC motor. While the ground wire of the supply is connected with the emitter of the TIP122 transistor. The other wire of the motor is connected with the collector of the TIP122. The 5 volt positive wire is connected with one leg of the 330 ohm resistor while the other leg of the 330 ohm resistor is connected with the pin 4 of the optocoupler. A wire from pin 4 of the optocoupler is connected with the base of the TIEB 122 transistor. This jumper wire is used to connect the grounds of both the power supplies. Finally connect a wire from pin number 5 of the Arduino which is the PWM pin with the pin number 1 of the optocoupler through a 330 ohm resistor and connect pin 2 of the optocoupler with the Arduino's ground. So now that the interfacing is completed, now let's start the programming. Integer opto underscore pin 1 is equal to 5. Pin number 5 is the PWM pin of the Arduino. Integer V underscore resistor is equal to A1. Variable resistor is connected with analog pin A1 of the Arduino Omega. You can also run the same program Omega. Integer data. This variable data will be used to store the variable resistor values. The resistor which is connected with analog pin A1. 
pin mode opto underscore pin one output and pin mode uh, v underscore resistor input these are simply the pin mode functions uh, which i already explained in the led programming section then there starts a wide loop function which runs infinite time and i already explained this so data is equal to analog read v underscore resistor this instruction simply reads the variable resistor and stores the value in data data is equal to map a data comma zero comma 1023 then comma and 0 and 255 this instruction is used for mapping the data so we are limiting the value to 255 and then finally analog write opto underscore pin 1 data I have already uploaded this program now let's watch this in action As you can see, we can successfully control the speed of this computer fan. As you can see, I didn't use a heat sink. As these are temporary connections, but make sure you use a heat sink and also a free wheeling diode. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.